perhaps you don't consider this to be the lighter side, Matt, but. I take this very seriously, Brian. You take, I know you do. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I've seen your detailed notes. But, um, you know, uh, and, and Troy, by the way, you might want to hold your ears, maybe perhaps cover your eyes. I don't know if you can do that at the same time, but we're going to talk a little bit about Mr. Robot, mm -hmm. episode, actually, season two. And uh, so, Matt, give us the uh, give us the scoop. What's what's cool? Sure. Um, and also, just so I'm, I think Troy's probably glad he's in Australia because I've got a USB stick and I'm going to be sending spoilers <laughs> to several <laughs> machines in the vicinity. Okay. Um, so just be aware of that. Um, so again, spoilers. Uh, so episode two point six, they call it successor. Dot mm -hmm. P twelve. Um, I love those names. They're all file extensions. Um, so the, one of the first things that happens in the episode is. Um, Trenton uses the stage fright exploit against Mobley while they're in the cafe, which I thought was great. Yeah. And I, I was surprised to learn that .sh. With a little social engineering. With involved. a little social engineering, <laughs> that, which was really cool. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, of course, he, he gets, you, you learn suddenly when, when Darwin shows up, she's like, oh, that old trick. And I love that. <laughs> um, and .sh, which they used, is actually a top-level domain, which yeah. is a little interesting because it's also the extension for a shell script. Yeah. So, um, Found that interesting. The FBI conference call recording session was interesting. Mm -hmm. A um, little piece of history there that did happen. Yep, and it, it sounded like conference calls had been on where people just announced who they are, but they mm -hmm. didn't validate didn't everybody validate, on the call, yes. which I think has become standard practice over mm -hmm. the years. It was interesting that they used FFmpeg, which is a known encoder software to encode their, their, their latest F Society video and upload mm -hmm. it to Vimeo, and they used it during the Tor browser, so nice job, guys. When they were hacking into the lawyers' accounts, Using methods like password resets is absolutely a way that people will do this. I remember, I think the mm -hmm. Matt Honan hack was one of the biggest profile versions of this, where someone managed to completely take over his Twitter account and wipe mm -hmm. all of his I, you know, Apple devices. So this is a case where password. they broke into the email account first mm -hmm. and then used that to reset passwords to get into to other get accounts. to other accounts. We just talked about that a little bit ago, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> so that's kind of cool. The eCoin payment looks a lot like a lot of some of the Bitcoin wallets we've seen. So that was pretty legit. Good job. Mm -hmm. Uh, FBI made a reference to using the Wayback Machine to find uh, Mobley's old DJ site when he was on Angel Fire, mm -hmm. which brings me back back to when I was like middle school when Angel Fire was the big place to have a website, yeah. which was cool. Uh, and the last thing in this episode that was technical was um, Mobley sends a five second wicker, which is messages that expire to Trenton, then reboots his phone to a custom ROM and wipes it. And all this stuff is just awesome. So <laughs> all in all, good ratings for technical expertise right. on this episode. You know, what I think is interesting. When you were in middle school. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think I am? Uh, so what I think is actually interesting about all of this is that on the one hand, you kind of feel like it's glamorizing the hacking, you know, trade a little bit. Mm -hmm. But the FBI is right on their tails. So. That, that is a good point that a lot of the things that are happening, despite their technical expertise, they're being tripped up by dumb things, like Mobley using a name that he used on his Angel Fire account years right. ago as his hacker handle, and then Dom showing up and basically wait, you know, rubbing it in his face and saying, right. I know who you are. I can't prove it yet, but I know who you are. And, and that seems to be her, her modus operandi, is, is finding the little places where people have slipped up. Mm -hmm. so well, I, and that's, that's ultimately what it comes down to. Is mm -hmm. you, it's, it's, it, it's the case where now the investigator only has to find one mistake ah, that I the see. hackers make. Interesting. That's a nice way of turning it around. Yeah. So, uh, episode 2.7, in at 5.fvv, which I thought was a great little reference. Elliot gets out of jail, and the first thing he mentions is we're back at in at 5, which mm -hmm. for people familiar with the Linux run levels, in at 5 is multi user mode with a GUI. And he says, I should be, you know, should, the colors should have returned, things still seem gray. I was like, that's, that's an interesting, I like that. Yeah. So, I was excited about that. So, were you as surprised as I was that he was in jail? There was something really methodical about his lifestyle, and I couldn't put my finger on it until. So there were some there were some hints, and if you go back and look at a, an old Reddit thread, somebody is like, "Oh, he's doing everything methodically, and you know, he's all he's doing is watching basketball." I bet you he's in prison. And everyone's like, yeah. "That's just silly. Yeah, that can't be silly. right." Uh, and, uh, but eventually, it proved to be true. So yeah. nice work. Um, the Angela had her rubber ducky tool still, um, mm -hmm. and that's running Mimikatz, accurate. Mm -hmm. uh, but she logged on as her target when she'd gotten the credentials from her own personal machine. Mm -hmm. So again, oops. oops. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of oops. Angela keeps making oopses. Um, she's yeah. not well trained, she's but she's, <laughs> she's definitely dedicated, so that's cool. Yeah. The Pony Express phone phone made an appearance. It had a, a tool which I don't think exists in the real world called CrackSim. Mm -hmm. And a few of us were talking about how this might possibly have worked, but it seems like they were able to listen in on phone calls 
from another phone without any access to the SIM card of the other phone, it might have been a fudge uh, for the show, just to have the, for the plots. But um, I don't know. Are you familiar with anything that might make that possible? Well, uh, there was a 60 Minutes article about vulnerabilities in Nessus 7, but I don't think that uh, I don't think that's played into this. Yeah, this, that wouldn't have, have been something you could do from example. a handset either, would it? No, I yeah. didn't know. Absolutely not. So okay. this, um, at, I think they they. They did what they needed to do. To for further the, the plot. <laughs> yeah, and that's fair. Yeah. It's not accurate, but it's all right. Right. Um, and uh, they used a real time translation.net website, which actually does exist. And that was kind of interesting to watch that being used to translate the audio from Chinese mm -hmm. into English. And that was a big part of the plot this week. And I'll, I'll try to avoid spoiling that bit, but that was really cool. All right. And also, I made a note to myself if anyone knows where I can buy one of those dark army masks, they're really growing <laughs> on me. They're pretty cool. <laughs> they're 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 coming out with a, a you know a lot of little peripheral things associated with the program, so mm -hmm. those are going to have to be available one way or another. So, all right. <laughs> well, Troy, hopefully it didn't ruin anything for you, and uh, if you get a chance to watch that program, you know, have a blast with it. <laughs>